Good morning guys, we're back here working on the Wagoneer. I've got the Jeep up on the hoist, pressure washed underneath, waiting for that to dry, then we're gonna paint it. And then we're waiting on that, we're gonna tear into this and fix all the oil leaks. I pressure washed it down last night, but it's still pretty greasy in spots. So we're gonna work on taking all the stuff off on the top, we need to get down in the middle, there's an oil cooler in there and they're pretty common for leaking. So we're gonna go ahead and reseal everything on the top end and hopefully that fixes all our oil leaks. All right, let's start stripping her down. I love the mixture of Torx head and 10 millimeter bolts. Yeah, look at all the grease. We'll be cleaning that up before it goes back in. This is a little ridiculous. We're making some progress slowly. There is still a lot of oil on this and I'm not kidding. This thing is greasy. It looks like it is all from the oil cooler, which is down in there. So we're going to keep digging. Got to pull the intake manifolds off from the turbo. And then while we have all that stuff out, we're going to uh, delete some things that are no longer needed. Fix some of the common problems with these engines and try and make something that's going to be fairly reliable. Having the body off the frame definitely makes this part easier. There's a lot to take apart back here at the turbo. First of all, you have to take off the downpipe. Then you have to take off the feed for the EGR valve, which might not be going back on. Then you got three bolts here for the up pipe. Same on this side, three bolts for this up pipe. Then once you get all those out, there's two bolts down here for the bracket that holds the up pipe. And then if I'm looking correctly, it's two Torx bolts way, can you see, way down there. And then it looks like the turbo should lift off. So I'm gonna go ahead, get those Torx bolts out. Uh, hopefully they come apart as good as the rest of the stuff. Uh, Mercedes does a really good job with quality fasteners that actually come apart. So far, everything's come apart without heat. I know I said that too soon, but pretty crazy because I don't know the history of this motor, but the Jeep it came out of has 300 and what is it? 345,000 kilometers and all the hardware looks amazing like for exhaust hardware so yeah i'm gonna go ahead pull those two bolts out of here see if the turbo will lift off and then we can pull the intake manifolds and two so far they've all given a really nice snap to come loose and then they just thread right out. Like this is no effort once it's broken free. Pretty impressive actually. I work on cars with 100,000 kilometers on them and all the bolts are rusted off. All right, we're definitely loose. Let's see. Yep. 
Let me just unplug the turbo actuator. Just like that. Right now this whole wiring harness needs to come out of the way. Which way is going to be the easier way to disconnect it? Looks like to sling it back this way. I got to take off the uh, fuel rail crossover. All right, gonna quit chatting and get to pulling bolts out. Okay, we have this just about clean enough to take the oil cooler out and replace the seals underneath. While I have it uh, this far stripped down, I'm going to remove each and every glow plug, seeing as they're super easy to get at right now, and make sure that uh, there's any C's in all those threads, because there's nothing worse than having a glow plug break off in a cylinder head whenever you need to change it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just while it's easy access. I can get nice, lots of pan train fluid in, everything's all cleaned out. And then once we get the seals changed on the oil cooler, I'll go ahead and put the intakes back on and then I can seal those off and we can work on getting the rest of the grime off the front of the engine. I really don't know like if this was all from the oil cooler. I don't think it was. I think there's another leak, but it's so, so caked on there. It's hard to tell. So we're just going to clean everything off. Do the best we can and if we find another leak later on we'll have to come back and fix it but this is most likely the cause so fingers crossed that's all we have for an oil leak all right let's pull the oil cooler out i already went and broke all these fasteners free by hand first now i'm just zipping them out with the Power gun. I mean, nothing should be seized. It's been soaking in oil for who knows how long. The amount of sludge that I scraped out of here. It's pretty wild. So I'm hoping to see some mushroomed or flattened gaskets once I pull this off. And that'll make me feel better about the oil leak. All right. Well, we do have that one is flattened. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's not good. And that one's flattened as well. And then for some reason, both the ones on this side look fine. I don't know if it was a torque issue. I'm hoping that this was it. But anyway, this is good preventive maintenance. I'm going to go ahead and get all this cleaned up now. I'll get those gaskets pulled out and get those cleaned up. I got new ones to put in. Start soaking up all that oil and coolant and crud and... Shove some rags in the holes, keep all the crud out. Oh yeah, that is full of sludge. just wonderful.
nasty. We're getting there, though. I'm going to let that dry up a little bit before I come in and start cleaning more. I'm going to try some of these glow plugs. I've been letting them soak for a little bit now. See if I can get them to wind all the way out. Oh yeah, perfect. Can't ask for anything better than that. Awesome. Pull them all out, clean them up, lubricate the threads, and put them back in. This is a really good sign. Someone's beat me to it. This whole glow plug is covered in anisees, threads and everything. So someone already did a lot of work on this before I got it. I got lucky with this. Let's pull another one out and see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Already anisees. Nice. That's awesome. All right, we have this all cleaned up. While I was in here, there's two drain holes. There's one right there. And there's one down in there that you can see. I went ahead and got those all unclogged. All I did was run this uh, metal rod through them and then I blew them out with compressed air. And now they both drain, so it should help from anything getting built up in here for a while again. Got the new gaskets installed on the oil cooler and I'm going to go ahead and pop this back in. Here's the old ones, they were a little cruddy. So here's one of the reasons why it's beneficial to remove these intake swirl valves. So if you look here, look at all that carbon buildup. And all that buildup comes from the GR system. Which is also why I'm going to be removing that system from this. So this is one of the main things that uh, ails a 3 liter Mercedes diesel. Is these valves get all kicked up with carbon. And then they seize up and the little linkages break. And it goes into limp mode because half the time they get stuck closed and then one whole valve is not getting airflow. So I am physically removing the flap and I'll be plugging the hole and then we're going to be removing the EGR system from this engine and we're going to be we will no longer have carbon buildup and we'll keep the engine clean and running better. It's just one of the things you can do to help make these 3 liters work better. Aside from an EGR system, and what else did this have for emissions? I think that's pretty much all this had for emissions. It had a cat, which I will put back on. Um, but aside from those two things, the 2008 variant did not have anything compared to the newer Sprinters. So that's why I chose to go with this one and it's a little bit easier to mess around with because you know i can make a jeep transmission work with two different transmissions uh we still have to oh yeah i haven't told you guys yet i picked up a rubicon transfer case so we gotta swap out the transfer case for the rubicon case and finish putting the transmission back together that's probably gonna be in the next video then once we have all that, I've been working on the wiring here and there. That's been a very time consuming task. So I haven't been filming a lot of the wiring, but 
we should be able to bolt the body on for good very soon. I just got to do some paint work on the bottom of that body, finish painting the chassis. All our modifications are done to make this engine and transmission fit. It's pretty wild that, you know, stock cross member location, a Jeep JK transmission mount, stock engine mounts from the uh, Cherokee, just some really quick engine mounts made up out of scrap metal and we have an engine transmission situated uh, once I get the transfer case in then we can measure for the rear drive shaft I'm hoping the front one's still gonna work with the Rubicon case hopefully fingers crossed but yeah that's the update so far so I'm gonna do something a little tricky here this is the intake setup off of a sprinter van which has the 3 liter Mercedes OM642. And this is the intake setup out of the 2008 Jeep. And it has a whole bunch of extra stuff that I no longer want and or need. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete the swirl valve flaps on these intakes. I will uh, probably thread the hole there and screw a uh, pipe plug in. We'll get all that done. Install the new intake. And just leave all of this garbage out. And then over here at the charge tube, all I have to do is remove this tube that goes through this plate. So let's cut that off, get a piece welded in, and then bolt this plate back onto the bottom of this charge tube and that'll be that. I'm going to keep going on removing these little swirl flaps. You literally just grab a hold of the flap like this and twist the metal part of the flap off. And then once you have all that ripped off, just like that. Don't worry, I'll go back and clean up the surface after. I got some more work to do to these intakes. Once you get all that ripped off, just like that, then you can come and pull the spool out. And then afterward, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to tap these holes and just put plugs in. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna use JB Weld and then I'll be fine. All right, I'm gonna get back to it. See you guys in a bit. All right, so here's what we got going on. Have some one eighth pipe plugs and they're the right size that if I tap the hole, they'll screw right in. So I have a one eighth pipe plug tap. I've already gone ahead and drilled out the top hole larger. So the tap has room to go in and hit the threads down inside. Or sorry, not th they're not threads yet, but they will be. So we're going to go ahead and start tapping that. Take it to about there and give it a try. That's perfect. So what I'll do is I'll get all the holes tapped out and then I'll mix up a little bit of JB Weld. Just put some on the threads of each one of these as I thread it in and then I'll never have to worry about a leak. 
All right, we are ready to reassemble the intakes. Definitely easier said than done. All right, so I got to modify this fuel line for the sprinter intake. It's uh, now in the way for the heater hose because that's all the way up at the front now. Maybe I can just give it a tweak. This will definitely be worth it though. Try that. Just a tweak. That's better. All right, I'll go grab some bolts. Surprised these don't have dowels. All right, next I'm gonna look up the torque spec and sequence for all the bolts for the intake. All right, so some of my videos did not turn out, so I'm gonna reshoot some of this. Um, unfortunately, none of it turned out putting it back together after getting the intakes on, but it was really just a reverse of taking it apart. So here we are, everything's back together. Uh, stuff's gonna work well. Got that line modified. I just got to uh, put a longer rubber hose on it. The new heater hose. So, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about the end of the video on this one, guys, but uh, I just had an equipment malfunction. It happens, and I didn't catch it, so I lost some, some footage, but we'll, uh, we'll get back to a clip right now. Well, we got quite a bit done this weekend. We got a bunch of work done on the engine. All the oil leaks are fixed, I think. I hope. We'll see. Ended up getting the brake system mounted. Got the first coat of paint on the front clip. Once that fully cures, I'm gonna come back with some uh, flat uh, clear. Try and bring the gloss down. And we got the underside all painted. Well, thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time.